Well, good morning and welcome again to our service here at St. Mark's Presbyterian Church on October 18th. So we are welcoming you and we're all happy that uh, you have joined us. And I know that these days things are, there's a little bit more cause for concern with our COVID numbers, they're rising. So I, I sincerely hope that all of you are staying safe and healthy and uh, really trying to keep your connections with people. Uh, this is a time when we're, I guess, entering into the fall, have entered into the fall, and we'll be looking forward to a colder season, the winter season, and it seems like things are going in the serious direction uh, as far as Ontario is concerned. So. Uh, I do hope that you and your families uh, remain safe. You're all taking care of yourselves. And uh, let's just keep one another in prayer. Keep our St. Mark's congregation in prayer as well. So we do want to thank you for joining us uh, this morning or today, which, whichever day you, you are viewing this. Also, uh, this is a time for us to uh, recognize a special occasion. Uh, our longtime music director, George Helt. He is in here somewhere, and I just want to call George up. George, where are you? Where, where did you go? There he is. So this is a surprise for him. He doesn't know we're doing this. We're, we're celebrating George's 35th anniversary. Yes, you heard that right. He's been with St. Mark's for 35 years now. And so he's on his way up. So George, just like, like you to, just want to welcome George with us. And George, just as, a, as an acknowledgement of Thank thanks and just a blessing to you on behalf of St. Mark's to recognize your blessing to us as a congregation, as God's people. Your music ministry is just marvelous. It's stupendous and it is, that's just a, a across the board consensus. We really do thank you and appreciate all the gifts that you bring to worship and our community here each and every Sunday and many, many days and hours in between. Thank you very much. You are probably one of the few uh, longest standing uh, participants uh, at St. Mark's. And so we just want to congratulate you. Happy anniversary on your 35th, 35th year. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yes, there was a, there was a woohoo. Yeah, thanks very much. Would you like to, he doesn't know this is a total no, surprise yeah. to him. Uh, would you like to well, say a few words? Just thank everybody for their support over the last many years and hope we get through this time together now, which is something new, but Thanks again for your support over the many years. Thank you. God bless you, George. And uh, welcome again to our service, and let's join together in our praise and worship this day.
Let's join together for our call to worship and let's join responsively. Friends, the love of God is poured over you. We belong to God. Though there are rulers, presidents, kings and queens, God reigns supreme over all of life. In God we live and move and have our being. We are made in the very image of God. God's stamp is on our lives. God's love and compassion is built into us. God's mercy and hope flow through us. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Let us praise God who walks daily by our side. Amen. Let us come together as God's people in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your goodness and bounty. You provide all that we need for our daily living and spiritual growth. May we always thirst and hunger after you and your will for us. God of power and might, help us to recognize the imprint of your love and mercy in our lives. Open our hearts to that love that we may grow in our faith and be strengthened in our witness to you. Patient God, we are so easily distracted from what you would have us be and what you would have us do. We allow ourselves to be claimed by our anger and resentment. But you remind us that from the beginning, your love has been available to us. Forgive us when we so easily turn toward ignorance and greed as ways of living in the world. Heal our wounded souls. Challenge us to be your people, not owned by false promises of instant wealth and status, but strengthened and empowered to be those who bring hope through our words and actions. We thank and praise you and offer this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as the beloved, we bear the image of our God. In our faithful dedication to answer the call to service, God's presence abides with us. Embrace your belovedness. Embrace your forgiveness. You are called the beloved of God and given God's own stamp of love and mercy upon your lives. Amen. And now let's lift up one another in our hearts as we share and spread Christ's peace. And so may the peace of Christ be with you. Our first hymn is number 425, if you're following in your hymn books, it's We Praise You, O God.
responsive reading is taken from Psalm 96, verses 1 to 9. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. The scripture reading is taken from Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. There's a story about a man who came to the Presbyterian church, the local Presbyterian church, and wanted to speak with the minister. And so he said, Reverend, my dog died and I would like a Christian burial for him. The minister said, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your dog, but we don't do dog funerals uh, in the Presbyterian church. You might try the Baptist church down the street. The Baptists might do it. The man uh, turned sadly and said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you won't be able to do my dog's funeral, but I understand. I'll try the Baptist church. Uh, but by the way, uh, would you tell me how much it would be appropriate to give to the Baptist church as a memorial if they do the funeral? I was thinking of a gift of maybe around $25,000. Do you think that's enough? And the minister said, wait, wait a minute. You didn't tell me that your dog was Presbyterian. Churches deal with money. That's a given. Now that might have a negative ring to it to make that association. It might have a negative ring to it for some people, maybe because of the sometimes not so great connection between religion and money. We, we see that uh, sometimes on TV and so on. Uh, with the focus on accumulation and profit, uh, like in the story. Jesus talked a lot about money. That might come as a surprise to some of you. He did talk a lot about money. But he didn't talk about it in terms of accumulating it or possessing it for its own sake. His teachings around money were always about stewardship, care, the ethical management of it, responsibility for others with money. There was always something that we were to, to do to serve, to help, to care and support. Nearly half that's around 16 of the 38 parables that Jesus spoke were concerned 
with how to handle money and possessions. In the Gospels alone, an amazing one out of 10 verses, 288 in all, deal directly with the subject of money. The Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, fewer than 500 verses on faith, but more than 2,000 verses on money. Jesus talks more about money and possessions than heaven and hell combined. Jesus talks about money more often than he spoke of faith and prayer combined. Why? Because money seems to be an extension of our heart, our values. It's an extension of who we are, what we value about ourselves and life how we handle it, how we treat it, how we regard it, how we use it, it reflects who we are. Find out about a person's philosophy about money and possessions, and you'll learn so much about the person themselves, their character, their values, their priorities, their view of relationships, society in general, and so on. For Jesus, the constant refrain that we see in his ministry regarding money is that through it, through money, the real person is revealed or exposed. So first of all, let's look at the two parties, the two groups who opposed Jesus on this occasion, the Pharisees and the Herodians. The Pharisees were devout, deeply, deeply devout Jews. They were the religious authority. And they were sworn enemies of the Romans and vigorously opposed Roman rule. They hated it. They resented it. And they were also vehemently opposed to paying taxes to Caesar, the Roman emperor. The Herodians, on the other hand, were the party of the Roman puppet, King Herod. And Herod derived his authority not from the Jewish people, but from Rome. The Herodians were the wealthy and privileged class who gladly collaborated with the enemy, helping them to rule the Jews in exchange for status and power in that society. So they would have no problems paying taxes to Caesar. For the Herodians, it was the classic arrangement of convenience of you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Jesus was a foe of the Pharisees because he denounced their religious authority and credibility by openly challenging their legalistic approach and interpretation. Jesus was also a foe of the Herodians because he posed a threat to their power from Rome by empowering the Jewish people and possibly creating an uprising against Roman rule. The Pharisees and the Herodians were outright enemies of each other on top of that. But, but they had a common enemy in Jesus. This united them in their opposition to him in this instance. And so they decided to join forces here to entrap him. And so as we read the text, With phony praise, they posed the question. They said, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? 
What's your position on the Jews having to pay the imperial tax to Caesar? If Jesus said, yes, they should pay the tax, then he'd be in trouble with the religious establishment and be branded a traitor. If he said, no, they shouldn't pay, then he would be in trouble with the Roman rulers and branded an enemy of the state. The Pharisees and the Herodians were testing Jesus' loyalty. They were attempting to put Jesus' allegiance on full display for all to see. And they were confident that he was going to trip up. A great many followers of Jesus were deeply, deeply devout Jews for whom the tax was particularly offensive. And so if he approved the tax, they would lose confidence in him as their leader. But if he disapproved of the tax, then those loyal to Rome could have him up on charges of sedition. So where was Jesus loyalty what would he say what what can he say in this moment so whatever he answered he was going to say the wrong thing according to one side at least he was going to get himself in trouble either way one has to admit this is a a very clever trap a calculated ploy to get Jesus into a lot of trouble, guaranteed. So, first of all, he calls them hypocrites. And in response to their question, he says, show me a coin. Show me the coin used for paying the tax. The coin used for paying the tax wasn't a Jewish coin. It was a Roman coin. And there it was. The Roman coin, the symbol of so much tension. It was a symbol of pain and shame for a conquered people. Yet also, it was a symbol of a mighty empire. It was a symbol of failure and a symbol of success, a symbol of resentment and a symbol of allegiance. There was just so many issues centered around that one little coin. And so in that context, Jesus asks, whose portrait is on this coin? Whose title? And the answer comes, the emperor's. And so he says, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Their trap failed. Not only that, but Jesus' wisdom was met with stunned silence. Everyone was amazed at his answer. No trap could get him. Jesus is saying that Caesar can stamp his picture all over the place, like a coin. He can put his picture anywhere. And if the coin is stamped with the image of the emperor, Jesus says, then give it back. Give back what is the emperor's. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. And give to God the things that are God's. The coin bears the image of Caesar. What bears the image of God? We do. We bear God's image. The coin bore Caesar's image. 
give it back to him. You bear God's image. Give yourself back to God. We are stamped with the likeness of God. And that stamp declares that we belong wholly and entirely to God. You were made in God's image, and now Jesus is calling us to give to God what is God's, and that is all of yourself, all of us. Our ultimate loyalty lies with God in Jesus Christ. And we are called to offer all that we are and have to God, your love, your service, your joys, your anxieties, your fears, your energy, your brokenness, your successes, and your failures, your present, your future, all of it. Give back to God. Surrender your entire self to God. It's all God's anyway. We bear the image of God through the power of the Holy Spirit who abides in our very being. Are you portraying the image of God in and with your life? Let us dedicate our whole selves to a life of discipleship as we follow in the way of Christ, holy and entirely. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that you have created us in your image. It's so empowering knowing that we are so privileged to bear your likeness. Now let us live in faithfulness and loyalty to your calling as your beloved daughters and sons to cultivate your vision here on earth. Use us, we pray, to your glory and your glory alone. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship God in the singing of hymn 637, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated.
Now let's join our hearts together in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we enter these gates with thanksgiving and praise. We give you thanks for who you are for us, not just the things that you've done. Many of us have come with burdens seeking your healing. Others have come with joys celebrating the goodness and blessings that abound. Each one is welcome here. Holy God, we acknowledge our divine calling, our calling to live as children of light and love and of joy and peace all the days of our lives. We thank you for this calling and for the power you grant us through the Holy Spirit to be what you call us to be. Grace your church so that in all we might be an example of goodness and mercy to those who are seeking righteousness. Bless your church so that its deeds might nourish the hungry, encourage the despairing, and bring hope to those who live in fear. Compassionate God, we pray that you would touch those in our midst who are in need of your strength this day, whether in mind, body, or spirit. We remember particularly Andrew and Margaret Wong, Jessica Yiga, Serene Zand Osmar, Katrina and Nadia. We pray for Deb Alcorn and Karenel Alfonso. Loving God, help us to be mindful of the example we are to follow and make us all that we are called to be. We pray that we would give to you our complete faithfulness and that you would guide us and lead us in holiness all our days. Through Christ and in Christ we pray. Amen. And now as this is a time for our offering to God, I invite you to go to the front of our church website, stmarkstoronto.org, and that will uh, allow you to uh, give a donation uh, through the donation button there. And your givings, your support and generosity is deeply, deeply appreciated uh, and much needed during this pandemic uh, time that we're in. And it seems like it will be continuing um, for the foreseeable future. And so your gifts, whether large or small, your regular gifts are truly appreciated and they go a long way in supporting this ministry. So just wanna say thank you. And so in gratitude for all God's blessings in our lives, let us receive our morning offering. Let's join in prayer together. Gracious and giving God, you are our maker and our redeemer. By your love, all that we call good comes from you. We thank you with these tithes and offerings and with our vow to live as your faithful people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Help us to always acknowledge your goodness and serve you willingly and joyfully through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now let's join together for our closing song, hymn number 461, Be Thou My Vision. Let's join together for our benediction. Go in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of Christ. And may God's love surround you and fill you. May the Spirit's power support and guide you. And may the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord shine in all that you do and say, both now and forevermore. Amen.